Hair loss and hair thinning are significant problems, especially after the age of 30. In this discussion, we will explore the most common causes of hair loss, why it is more prevalent in men compared to women, and how to treat and prevent hair loss. One in four men will have noticeable hair loss after the age of 20, and by the age of 50, half of all men are significantly bald. Women typically have a lower risk of hair loss at a young age, but by the age of 50, 40% of women also experience significant hair thinning. Why is there a difference between men and women? The answer lies in androgens, which are male sex hormones. Men have higher levels of these hormones, particularly testosterone. Testosterone is converted into a more potent form, dehydrotestosterone, by the enzyme alpha reductase. Ditrotestosterone affects hair follicles, causing them to miniaturize over time and eventually shrink to the point where they stop functioning. This process leads to hair thinning initially, followed by hair loss. Women have much lower levels of these hormones, which is why they experience less hair loss. Additionally, some hair follicles are more sensitive to androgens, leading to specific patterns of hair loss. For example, in men, baldness typically affects the hairline, temples, and crown of the head, a condition known as androgenic alopecia or male pattern baldness. Hair on the sides and back of the head is often preserved because the hair follicles in these areas have fewer androgen receptors. Genetics play a crucial role in this process. Some people start losing hair in their 20s while others maintain a full head of hair into their 50s. What does genetics mean in this context? It means that some men genetically have more sensitive androgen receptors in their hair follicles while others have fewer. Additionally, some men have higher androgen levels than others, but the sensitivity of the androgen receptors is the primary mechanism. The action of androgens has a cumulative effect over the years, which is why hair loss is a gradual process. This male sex hormone dependent hair loss is responsible for 95% of cases of male hair loss. It is also a dominant factor in women with 50% of female hair loss cases being androgen dependent. Generally, women have much lower levels of androgens and the female sex hormone estrogen has a protective effect on hair. Furthermore, women have less sensitive hair follicles along the hairline, which is why their hair loss tends to be more diffuse rather than following the male pattern. In women, the second most common cause of hair loss is telogen effluvium, which occurs when a large number of hair follicles enter the resting phase permanently, leading to diffuse hair shedding. This can be triggered by various factors, such as stress, deficiencies in iron, zinc, or vitamin D. Certain medications like antidepressants and blood thinners or chemotherapy. The good news is that this type of hair loss is often reversible if the underlying factor is addressed. Hair regrowth usually begins within three to six months after the trigger is removed, although it may take up to a year or more for full recovery. Major life events can accompany this type of hair loss in women, such as childbirth or other major traumas. The primary supplements used to treat this type of hair loss are iron supplements if ferritin levels are low. Vitamin D supplements as vitamin D is one of the most commonly deficient vitamins that affect hair growth. Zinc supplements if deficiency is present, although zinc deficiency is not very common. Adequate protein intake is crucial because hair is primarily made of the protein keratin. In cases of telogen effluvium, oral supplements are more important than vitamin and mineral containing shampoos. Among medications, minoxidil is a topical vasculator that promotes hair growth by increasing blood flow to hair follicles, prolonging the inagent growth phase. Increasing follicle size, usually at 2%, minoxidil solution is recommended for women. It is typically applied twice a day to the affected scalp. To assess minoxidil's effectiveness, it is necessary to use it for at least six months. Hair shedding may initially increase during the first few weeks as older hairs fall out to make way for new growth. In this case, more than 50% of patients notice the effectiveness of minoxidil, especially if the underlying cause or defense is also addressed. Now, let us discuss how to treat androgen-dependent alopecia, which is the cause of hair loss in the majority of men and women. 
Minoxidil is the first-line treatment here as well, with around 60% of people experiencing some degree of hair regrowth with its use. Minoxidil must be applied consistent. If treatment is stopped, any new hair growth will likely be lost. Minoxidil is generally considered safe without significant side effects for most people, though sometimes local irritation can occur. The full effect is typically seen within 12 months. It is usually applied twice a day or once a day. For men, the 5% form is recommended, while for women, the 2% form is preferred. The second most common medication is finasteride. It is an inhibitor of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, which converts testosterone into dehydrotestosterone. It is primarily effective in men, reducing hair loss progression and promoting hair regrowth in about 70% of men. Finasteride is not recommended for women, especially pregnant women, as it can cause birth defects. Sometimes finasteride has unwanted side effects such as just decreased libido and erectile dysfunction. In rare cases, it can cause gynecomastia, or breast enlargement. This happens because dehydrotestosterone is a strong androgen which also plays a role in libido and erectile function. Some estrogens produced in the male body are also converted to dehydrotestosterone and when this conversion is disrupted, breast tissue growth can become more prominent due to increased estrogen levels. To summarize, finasteride is effective and usually safe with few side effects but if these side effects occur, they can be serious for the affected individuals. Finasteride is generally considered safe but requires ongoing treatment. If intake is stopped, hair loss typically returns within one year. For long-term concerns, finasteride slightly increases the risk of high-grade prostate cancer in the older population while generally decreasing overall prostate cancer risk by around 25%. This correlation exists, but we do not know if it is a true correlation or a false correlation. With more aggressive cancers being detected earlier in a shrunken prostate gland, there are also concerns about breast cancer, but this correlation is not fully established. Finasteride is taken as a 1 mg oral tablet daily. Like minoxidil, it may take 3 to 6 months to see noticeable results with full effects by 12 months. Dutasteride is similar to finasteride but more potent as it inhibits both type 1 and type 2 5 alpha reductase. It is more effective in reducing dihotestosterone levels but is not approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Finasteride, however, is approved to treat androgenic alopecia in men. Another option is hair transplantation, which involves moving hair follicles from areas resistant to dihotestosterone, usually from the back and sides of the scalp to balding areas. It is a permanent solution for hair loss, but is usually expensive, requires multiple sessions, and has a recovery period. There are risks of scaring or uneven hair growth. The transplanted area and donor site usually heal completely within two to three weeks and typically two sessions are sufficient. For extensive hair loss, more sessions may be needed. The donor area, usually the back of the scalp, typically has enough hair to cover the forehead and crown. Low-level laser therapy is also used to stimulate hair follicles and increase hair density. The Food and Drug Administration has approved it for both men and women and it can be used in conjunction with other treatments. It is considered safe but long-term usage is required for effectiveness. This typically involves using a laser comb or cap for 10 to 15 minutes several times per week. Several months of usage are needed for the effect to be noticeable. Other supplements used for hair loss include biotin, also known as vitamin B7, which is important for for keratin synthesis. Biotin deficiency can cause hair thinning, but its deficiency is rare. Vitamin D is another important supplement because it is essential for hair follicle cycling. Deficiency in vitamin D has been linked to hair loss conditions like alopecia areata. Supplementation can help restore hair health in individuals with a deficiency, but its effectiveness in those with normal levels is unclear. So palmetto is often promoted as a natural dihydrotestosterone blocker similar to finasteride. Some studies suggest it may help with androgenic alopecia by reducing dehydrotestosterone levels, though evidence is limited and mixed. 
It is generally safe but can cause mild side effects like stomach discomfort and headaches. It may also interact with certain medications such as blood thinners. Collagen is a protein that supports hair strength and elasticity. While collagen supplements are popular, there is limited direct evidence that they improve hair growth. However, they may support overall hair health indirectly by providing amino acids necessary for keratin production to prevent hair loss. Eat nutrient-rich food and proteins, intake enough vitamins and minerals, avoid harsh brushing, tight hairstyles like ponytails or braids, and excessive use of heat styling tools which can damage hair and lead to breakage. Use gentle sulfur-free shampoos and conditioners that do not strip the hair of its natural oils. Regularly massage your scalp to stimulate blood flow, which can help nourish hair follicles. Protect your hair from excessive sun exposure by wearing a hat or using hair products with you protection.